Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about what is 3Js. So let's start. So if I talk about what is 3Js, you can find it that 3Js is a cross-browser JavaScript library and application programming interface. It is used to create and display 3D animated animations or computer graphics in a web browser using WebGL. Now a question arises, what is WebGL and what, how we are going to show our 3D models or animations on a web browser or user's browser? So let's understand what is WebGL. So basically WebGL is a JavaScript API for rendering interactive 2D and 3D graphics without using any plugins on our web browsers. Right. So WebGL is fully integrated with other web standards, allowing GPU accelerated uses of physical physics and image processing and effect as a part of the web page canvas. So when we merge these two things technologies together, we can easily able to create a 3D websites, right? So basically, if we summarize these things that using 3JS, we are going to use 3JS, 3JS is going to use WebGL for a smooth graphical rendering, right? So we have JavaScript library, which is 3JS, that manipulates JavaScript API to do a graphical rendering, right? Using WebGL. And this WebGL is going to effect on the component, HTML component, which is canvas, okay? So whenever you see anything, 3D object or 2D object on a web page, you just need to understand that that object is showed or is rendered over a canvas, right? I hope you know about uh, canvas is an element used in HTML, right? So using that thing, we can show our 3D objects on the web page or web browsers, right? So that's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to deep dive into practical knowledge and the two practical things using 3JS. Have a nice day. Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about steps to use JavaScript with 3JS, right? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to create a Java HTML file. Then we need to create a JavaScript file. In this JavaScript file, we are going to import 3JS library using various ways, right? And then we need to write some code using 3JS, right? According our needs, according what the kind of things we want to show to our user or our, or our web page, right? And then we need to link that JavaScript file with HTML file. And then we need to create a server to see the output or to see the web page, which we have created using HTML and JavaScript. So this is how we can use 3JS. In next lecture, we are going to learn more about 3JS. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn that how 3JS work. So basically, we are going to discuss here some introduction part of 3JS, right? We are not going to see the practical works. In upcoming lecture, we are going to see everything by doing practicals, writing codes, okay? So this lecture basically is for just some basic introduction regarding 3JS and how 3JS work. So there are, uh, in 3JS, there are four basic things, which is basically required to create some output, right? Which is seen. Second one is camera, third one is renderer, and fourth one is mesh, right? Now let's understand each of these terms one by one. So if I talk about scene, so basically scene is what? Scene is a tiny universe in which all our 3D objects live, right? So basically scene is going to hold everything which we want to render on our web page. So for example, you are seeing a picture here, right? So in this picture, you can see trees, buildings, right? And so many things, right? It's look like a forest, all right? And in this forest, there is a city in the center, right? So these are things basically are rendered or created over a canvas element using 3JS, right? So first thing what we need to use is scene. So basically as I want to repeat that thing is, what is scene? Scene is a tiny universe in which 
all of the 3d objects live right it can be anything we are going to discuss more about it when we do practical things right now next one is okay now and what scene does provide us right so scene defines a coordinate system called world space okay so whenever i have to place any object for example if i have to place this building here or i have to place this windmill here right or i have to place this tree so i can use this world coordinate system which is we are we can say this world space right using what we can do basically when we use scene so scene defines a coordinate system which is world space and which is our main frame for reference when working with visible object in 3js right so using these points in this coordinate system we can easily put or place our 3d object in the scene right we are going to discuss about it in more details when we do practical things right now next one is camera okay so basically what camera do so camera work as a eye to see the tiny universe right means scene so whenever you have to see something in the universe which is our scene in which we have placed some object right as you can see here so when we have placed some object here now we have to look look on this object right so how we are going to look at this using camera right so so the so second important thing in 3gs is camera right so what is camera basically camera work as a eye to see the tiny universe which is seen in which all our 3d object live right now the next thing is mesh so basically what is mesh right so mesh are the most common kind of visible object used in 3d computer graphics so basically the 3d object is generally in terms of 3js is known as mesh so and uh, these are used to display all kinds of 3d objects right as you can for example cats dog human trees building flower mountains right and anything or else so as you can see here i have given a diagram here in which what mesh consists of basically mesh mesh is consist of geometry and material using both of this we can do what we can create a mesh in upcoming lectures we are going to learn so many things about how we can use geometry how we can create how we can use material to create a mesh right as you can see here in the example i have created i have given some pictures right so this all you have seen here is a mesh right and we have created it using geometry and material and the next one is renderer so what is thing what this renderer do so renderer use camera and scene to process the data and display it to the screen right on to a html canvas element so here you can see what will this renderer do this process the information coming from the dart camera and the scene and what scene is going to have is basically mesh so the renderer process all those things of information and give us an output over a canvas right you can see here right this is an j this is a video of a mesh so here we have a mesh which is cube and where you have put some uh, basically event listener to that which when we move the screen it will change its position right and give us this kind of output right so this is happening because we are using renderer right so i hope you have understood about everything what is camera what is scene what is renderer and how we can create mesh so basically it is a small introductory part of 3js right in upcoming lecture we are going to do so many practicals which will help you to understand more about 3js so till then take care and have a nice day hello everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about how we can implement 3js with html file so for that what you have to do is first you have to open cmd command prompt create a folder where you want to do all your coding practices right where you have to create your files for that you can use make dri right so mkdir the name of your project or folder 
so it is created there then you should have to moved in that folder for that you have to press cd name right and when you hit enter you are in the name folder now now what you have to do you have to go to go here i have given a resource link in our in our course so you just need to copy uh, this link so you have to select this link and copy that link and then after that you have to go here uh, in uh, chrome you have to paste that link using this link you will get to you will get a file on a github which are created under 3js folder right so you just need to download this 3js 3 dot module dot js right right now we are just focusing on basic part later when we uh, learn many things then we are going to download the whole 3js repository or project or our library right so right now what we are doing just we are just uh, going to download 3 dot module dot js right so you just need to click on download button and you press download here a file is going to be downloaded right either it's going to be downloaded or you just need to select all the content using control plus a and copy all the content right using control plus c after that what should you have to do to open that visual studio in your folder you just need to write code right once you write this visual studio code open that right opens here in the same folder here you need to create a file using name 3 dot m dot js either m dot js or modules dot js right and you have to paste your old code here so what you have to just paste it here you have to paste the code this code you have to paste here in the visual studio file so what is going to be happen basically after doing this you have a basic you have all the required uh, code in this file for the basic understanding of the 3js okay now after this what should you have to do hello everyone so in this lecture we are going to learn the implementation of 3js right so for that, you just need to create a HTML file. Right now, we are starting with a cube, right? So I have created a file which has a name cube.html, okay? Now, what we have to do is, so first, we have to create an HTML document, okay? Now, in this HTML document, we are using just a basic HTML syntax, right? As you are aware of. Now, just I need to give him a title, give this page a title, which is three years learning. After that, what should I have to do is, I have to create a div inside a body. This div is going to hold our canvas, right? Using three J's, we are going to create a canvas in this div. And this div has an ID, which is container, right? You can use any ID, any whatever name you want, right? For in this course, I'm using container as a id for this div in which we are going to show our canvas and on that canvas everything is going to be appear right using 3js next thing is that i have to create a script tag in this script tag i have to define the what is the type of this script right so basically what we are doing is we are using 3js model right mod so i have to define here that type is equals to module okay and then what should i have to do is i need to put here some extra code to create scene right 
And before that, I have to import what? I have to import or link this 3JS module with our this HTML file, right? So for that, what should I have to do is I just use, I have to write import star, right? As three from where? From three dot module.js. So whatever, and uh, so what we're doing here is we are importing everything from this module file as a three, okay? So whenever we have to use any method or a function, which are, uh, which are written here in this module three, dot module dot js then we are just going to refer that function or the um, module or sorry that function or the uh, method using three right and then what should i have to do we have to create a scene okay for creating a scene in three js we have to use this method basically this is a constructor right so using that uh, class, we are going to call a constructor. Okay. So what is going to be happen here is we just have a uh, writing here that where scene, it is a variable and we are going to create an object of, of this class. Okay. Now, what should we have to do using this? What, uh, what we are going to see is still right now, we are not going to see anything. Okay. On the web browser, but this will help us to create a scene. And then what should I have to do is we have to set our camera. We have to find out some configure our camera, right? So how we are going to kind of configure our camera is so for that, uh, as you know, that in last lecture, we have studied about that to create a camera in 3JS, what we can do. So we just need to uh, first write what three dot perspective camera. There are multiple uh, cameras available in 3JS. First one is prospective camera, which is basically used. Mainly this camera is only used, right? Okay, so this takes four parameter, which is view angle. Second one is width and the height of the screen or the monitor or the browser window. And this is one is the near clipping and this is a far clipping, right? So near clipping means how much, uh, which object you have to see at what distance, right? So near clipping means if you have a object in uh, in a, in on your screen, right? And if you place your camera in front of it, so what is the nearest position you want to see it, okay? If you cross that nearest position, then you can't be able to see the whole object, right? And the far clipping is something like, or uh, same like this, that how far you want to see from your camera, right? So it might be possible that there are some objects which are away from the camera, so you can't see it, right? as we see in natural way, okay? And uh, this height and width are the basically the size of the browser, which will help us to create a canvas easily as well as the, the camera perspective will be good to see that uh, how to uh, use it or how to analyze it. And this is the view angle. This view angle means basically at what angle you want to see, okay? Right, so these are four parameters of this perspective camera, okay? And we are going to use uh, this perspective camera uh, methods so many times, right? Okay. So this is how we can create our camera. And for this values, how we can define it, just we need to, uh, uh, for width, we can use our global variable, which is window, right? So when I write window dot inner width, I will go, I'm going to get the width of the browser. The same here is the window dot inner height. If I write this, I will, I'm going to get the height of the browser. And then I just have to define a variable view angle, which is 45, right? Either you can define here or you can directly write it here. Okay. Both will work, but for under, better understanding, we create a variable and then define the value, right? The same thing will, we have to do with near clipping and the far clipping. Okay. So we have to define this value in after that, what we have to do is we have to define the position of the camera. So in the world space, right, uh, where our camera is going to be positioned to look at the uh, images or the, uh, or what we can, all the graphics, which are, which we are going to render in our, uh, we can say in our uh, canvas, right. Or in our world, virtual world. 
so for that we have to position our camera right so we can render the all the all those things properly on our web, web browser so for that we use camera dot position dot set okay this is a method okay so which will help us to set set the camera position now the, uh, we are we also have to understand this uh, this will take what basically this will take three arguments 0 0 or 10 which i have written here it is what is it basically it's a uh, what we can say it's a world coordinate okay so here first argument is denoted by x second denoted by y and the third denoted by z okay so we have to exact exact uh, our exists our camera position according to what we are trying to look or what we are trying to render and after render how we are going to see that okay so for that we have to set the position we uh, once uh, we have created our project and run our project we are going to change the these values so that you can understand it properly then after that what should we have to create a geometry figure okay so basically a geometry figure means mesh right Suppose we are creating here a cube. Okay, so for creating a cube, there is a method available in 3JS, which is box geometry. Okay, so if you have to create a box or a cube, if we can use this uh, method to create a box, okay, or a cube. Okay, so basically, uh, our aim is what our aim is to create a mesh, and the mesh is a basically mixture of what geometry and the material. Okay. So first we need to uh, define our geometry and then we have to define our material and then we have to merge them to create a mesh in 3JS, okay? So first geometry is our cube geometry, right? Using what we are creating, uh, we are creating a box or a cube. So I have created a variable name cube geometry, right? We are using what? We are using three dot box geometry, okay? It's a what? It's a method, okay? And it also needs three arguments, which is height, width and depth okay so using this three argument we can create a cube okay now the second thing is that what we have to do is after creating a geometry we have to create material okay so for creating material there are so many different kind of materials are available in 3js uh, in upcoming lecture we are going to discuss all about the material okay it's a topic okay so we are going to discuss more about materials but right now what we are using we are using mesh basic material okay okay so this is a basic material which is uh, which we are going to use and this also needs so many parameters but uh, all are optional so right now we are just giving him a, uh, giving this method and uh, an object which contains color which is red okay so due to the uh, what is going to be happen uh, this create this kind of material is created which color is red okay now we have to merge these two cube geometry and cube material to create a mesh and for that we have mesh method right so in the in mesh method what we have to do is we have to create we have to pass these values cube geometry okay and cube material Okay, and this method will create a cube. So I have created a variable which name is cube. Okay, so all of these values is going to assign to this cube. Okay, and now I have to do what? I have to again set the position of the cube. Okay, so because I have to see that cube. Okay, so I have given this position is 0, 0, 0. It's a origin place of that world matrix or world, we can say, uh, world card card. Uh, world coordinate system okay which is zero 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 it's a center point of that so as you know that we have created a cube and we have put it at zero 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 right and now and our camera is at zero zero ten okay it means zero at x zero at y and ten on z axis right so we are just uh, putting our camera at the top of the cube and little bit far away from the cube, right? Okay. Now, the next thing is that what should we have to do is we have to create a renderer. Okay. So everything in theory, we have uh, discussed all those things, right? That we need a camera, we need a scene, and then we need a mesh. And to produce a uh, output of from these things, 
we need a renderer okay so what renderer do basically renderer will show everything collect every information and show us everything right so here we have created a renderer that is webgl renderer okay it's a method right this is anti alias basically help us to uh, produce sharp edges okay yeah, when our code is running, we will we are going to do what? We are going to set this value false and we are going to see what are the difference between them. Okay. So these are uh, to create renderer, we use WebGL renderer method. Okay. Now we have set the size. Okay. So we have to set the size of the renderer. So for setting the size of the renderer, what we have to do, we also use to use a method, okay, which is a set size method in which we have to pass the height and the width of the browser height and the width of the browser okay okay now what should i have to do is i have to do i have to get the element where i have to where i have to uh, produce the output okay so yeah. as you know that uh, what i have to do i have to uh, get the element which element where i have to create the renderer right so how i'm going to do that for that i have to go here where I have to I have to go here in the div where the ID is container. So uh, what I have to do is write. Okay, sorry for that. So what is there that I have to create a div which ID is container. So what is going to be happen using JavaScript? I am getting that element. Okay, so I am getting that element using ID. Okay, how I am going to getting it? Document dot get element by ID. Okay, which ID is container. So we are going to get that element. And in that element, I'm going to append a child, which is our renderer dot DOM element. Okay, so basically this is our canvas, which is going to be pasted here, where? In, in this container, right? So everything, whatever we are going to see, we are going to see here in this container, right? Now, after that, what we have to do, we have to create a function. This animate function is going to help us to animate the things, right? Right. So this is the basic structure of this thing. This is a, here is a function animate, which is request animate frame. It's a predefined function where we, which will call this function again and again. Okay. So whatever things you have to do, we have, we are going to write here. So this will help us to animate the things, right? So for that, suppose I have to, I have a cube, which we have created using our code here right a mesh so i have to suppose i have to rotate that mesh on x axis and y axis right so i am just going to write here cube dot rotation dot y right and i'm going to increase the value of it by 0 0.01 okay so this is how we are going to rotate that cube and to call that function here we have just defined the function so we need to call that function okay so once just we need to call that function and that function will going to call it uh, uh, again and again using request animation frame. Okay. So this is how, what is going to be happen. So uh, we have a code is ready. Let's go and see the output. Okay. So you just need to press go live and just wait a second. Okay. Here. So see, this is our first outcome. Okay. You can see here that there is a cube, which is rotating right on the X axis and Y axis. So this is our first code, which is running here. Okay, I hope you you are understand you are going to understand it very easily. You must need to do some practice. Okay, so you just need to pause that uh, video lecture, and then you just need to do the practice. Okay, and I'm going to share the code with you also. So first you try to make yourself, and then we are going to, then you are going you need to uh, match your code with my code, compare your code with my code, and then try to improve it okay so this is how we are we are going to create or we are going to learn new things in 3 years okay thank you hello everyone so in last lecture we have learned that how we can create this kind of cube using 3 years 3 years also provide us different different methods from which we can create multiple different different kind of geometrical figures so let's learn how we can create a capsule okay so if i talk about how to create capsule just let me comment out this thing, this line of quotes. And just let me paste this code for capsule. Okay. 
So here to create capsule, we just need to use capsule geometry. Okay. So this function or this method takes three, uh, two arguments. Either it takes so many arguments, but two arguments are compulsory. First one is for radius and the first and the second one is for length. Okay. So let me just show you the, what is the going to be the output. But before that, we just need to change here that in, instead of right here using Q, we just need to use capsule. Okay. So actually what is going to happen that when we call this animation frame or animation function, animate function, this is going to rotate our capsule. Okay. So you can see, as you can see here in the output, you can see a capsule. Okay. This is a shape which is rotating on its own axis. If I, if I don't want to rotate this, I can comment it out these lines and you will see there is a cube. There is a capsule present here. Okay. Just suppose if I want to add our cube in this, okay, in this output or in this canvas. So how I'm going to do that. So for that, I just need to comment it out these things. Or, or we just need, uh, we need to write the code here. So for that, I've just uncommented this and you can see, we also have a cube here and we also have a capsule here, but why these things are overlapping? Okay. Because we are just giving this cube a position, which is the origin. So for that, we need to put here minus 10. If I put minus 10, this cube is going to at the position of the minus 10, zero, zero. Okay. So here we can learn this. If the positioning system, if I write minus five, you can see this cube has its position here. Okay. Suppose if I had need another, so we can say geometry figure, or I want to rotate these geometry figures. Okay. So how I'm going to rotate these things? Just I need to write here, cube.rotation.y and capsule dot rotation dot x. Okay. So capsule is going to rotate on x axis, whereas our cube is going to rotate on y axis. So you can see here, right? This both were rotating on its own axis. If I, if I increase the value, okay, instead of adding 0.0, .0 rotation of the 0 0.1, if I add rotation of 0 0.1, then what is going to happen? It is going to rotate as fast, right? So we just want to rotate it in a in very slow way, okay? So we can use this, right? Suppose I have to add another geometry figure here. So I in this lecture we are going to learn that if uh, I have to put uh, another, uh, let's suppose a cube, or we can say or another geometry figure here on the right side of this capsule. How we are going to do that, okay? So for that. We just need to go to right here of method or some codes from where you, we can uh, add the code. Okay. So for code, we need a cone geometry. Okay. This is a constructor, which is used to create a geometry uh, of cone. Okay. In the, in all geometry, we are just using the same basic material. Okay. So the mesh material, mesh basic material is we are going to use. Okay. Here. Yeah for whatever we have created till that time. In upcoming lectures, we are going to learn more about materials, but till now in this lecture, we are just learning about geometrical figures. So we are going to focus on that. Okay. So here you can see that here we have created a cone geometry or a figure, which is looks like a cone. Okay. So for creating that, we just created some variables like geometry one, material one, and we are using the methods which are available in three J's. Okay, so we are accessing this uh, methods like we have imported here in the script tag. What we have imported, we have imported everything, right? Imported star as three. We have imported everything as three from there, from three dot model dot js. Okay, and this model we have downloaded from the GitHub. Now, so here what you have to do is we just need to write some code to create a cone. So for that cone, we just, we are going to use cone geometry. This method is going to take some parameters, right? 
where first one is for radius, right, which can be float number. Next parameter is for height, which is for the height of the cube, cube or sorry, of a cone. And here is the radial segments, okay, that how much segments you want to cover, okay. So by default, it's 32, and we always try to give the 32, okay. Now, suppose I have to shift this cone, this cone here. So what coordinates it is? So for to shift this, these are me. We need to do what? We just need to use cone dot position dot set. Where at the at what position we have to put? Let's say five zero comma zero. Okay. So at this position, what we are going to do is we are going to put our cone, right? So you can see here our cone is at position five comma zero comma zero. Our capsule is at position 0, 0, 0, and our cube is at position minus 5, 0, 0. Okay. So these all are the position. To understand more about it, about the position, coordinate position, in next lecture, we are going to discuss more about it. Okay. So suppose I have a task for you. If I if I want to rotate this, uh, let's say cone, okay, on the z-axis, how you are going to do this? Okay. So pause for a second, write some code in your editor and try to do that, okay? So here what we should need uh, to do is to rotate that cone. Just we need to write cone here. We just need to add rotation dot on Z axis. And then we just need to increment, okay? In each, whenever we call this animate function using request animation frame, this function is going to call and we are going to increase the position or the value of this rotation on the z-axis which is 0 0.01 okay if you want to rotate it fast you can give a more big value but right now we just i just want to rotate this cone in a same way or the same speed which all the cubes are rotating or all the items are rotating so you can see that this is also started rotating okay so right now we just learned that how we can create or add multiple different kind of geometrical figures using 3Js, okay? In upcoming lectures, we are going to learn so many things about it. So be on this. So till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to learn that how to set plane to our renderer or uh, to our canvas on the web page or web browser. So as you can see, okay, this is our blank uh, canvas or the browser here. And right now what we have to do is we have to implement a plane. So basically what is plane, right? So plane is just a 2D figure. It's generally used to create a ground for our projects, whatever you want, right? So it's also the part of uh, a geometry figure, right? And as we have done in previous lectures, right? That we have rendered different kind of shapes in our canvas or in our web browser, right? Using 3Js. It is a similar way, right? That if you need a plane in your web browser, if you want to see a plane or if you want to put a plane, right? according to your needs. Suppose you are trying to build a house, okay? So to create the floor of that house, you need to use plane, right? It is easy. It's a 2D material, right? So let's understand how we can do that. So for that, we just need to understand that geometry and material, right? Is going to give us mesh. We have understood this concept in last of uh, last previous videos, right? Whenever we need to put something, we always try to create its geometry, its material, and when we put it together, then we are going to get that particular mesh, right? So for the plane geometry, in 3JS, we have a function, which is plane geometric, right? So for that, you have to give two things, which is this height and the width, right? So I have given this plane geometry, a height of 10 and the width of 10. 
and for that material right now we are using basic mesh basic material right generally there are different kind of materials which 3js 3js provides us right and in upcoming lectures we are going to discuss more about it regarding the materials which we have which 3js provided us to you which us to us right so we have we are going to understand that but right now what we have done is we have we are here to understand that what material we are using it here is a basic mesh material which has a color right this color is generally like yellow color and in this uh, in this function we have given one more parameter which is side and this side is double sided what is double sided we are going to understand when we are going to look our material or our mesh in a working state right and then what we are going to done is we are going to what we have done here is we uh, as we have created our geometry we have created our material and now what we are going to do is we are going to mix up together to create a mesh a mesh which is which we want to be a plan right so i have created a variable here and using three dot mesh we just mixed both things together and then we are going to add this scene or sorry add this plane to our scene so you can see here here we got our plane but you think that this is a cube right it's look like a cube it's look like a square but that plane is a square because we have given height and width of 10 10 so when the height and the width of any figure is equal we generally call it square, right? Sorry. Uh, uh, we can all we can call it square, right? So right now, to understand if it's really a plane or 2D figure, let's render it and rotate it. So I have added a rotation of on the x-axis, right? And on the you can see here. So you can see at a one point of time when you see it is equal, it is parallel to our camera, right? You can see it's going to be. So here you can see this is a plane or 2D figure. So you can adjust the size according to your need. Suppose I need a uh, width more. So instead of 10, I, if I put 30 here, you can see what changes we can going to get, right? And it is giving us different effects on us. Let me try it 20 and this one also 20. So this will change the shape, okay? And now I what need I need to do here is just change the, let me, if I stop or if I just add another rotation here, what is going to be happen? It's something different kind of things, right? So this is how you can add plane on your browser or your canvas according to your needs, right? Suppose you don't want to rotate this thing. You just want to uh, shift or what you can say, you need to set a position or a rotation, right? So let me try this. How would we can do this? So we just need to set here. It's rotation or we need to set a rotation like that plane dot dot set what we need to set is we need to set according to x-axis right so let me try as we know that to set the rotation what you have to do is you have to give some properties this belongs to x this belongs to y this position belongs to z right so if I just want to rotate on the x-axis, a little bit rotation, I have, let's say I, I add one here and I give zero comma zero. What you are going to see here is, so it is somehow it is rotated on that particular axis, right? So suppose if to understand it better, let me reduce its size and height. So it will make a sense and let rotate this to 1.6. And you can see it's a perfectly a plane, right? 
if I rotate our camera to the top, you can see it. So how we can rotate that camera? So we need to go here on the position here where we have set the position for the camera. Right now it's on the Z axis. So let me more increase it to 25. So we are just out of the side, okay? If I have to go out or if I go up, if I make my position, camera position towards up direction, I have to change in Y axis, right? So you can see, we can see our plane easily, right? Suppose if I have to put some square here on the top of the plane, how would we can do for that? What we can, we need to do is just let me write some code and first. Okay. So camera is adjusted so that we can see our plane here. It is our plane. And if I have to put uh, what we can say a cube, how we are going to do that is first we need to create a geometry. Let's say, so I need to create a variable. Let's say cube geometry. This is going to assign by geometry. It is going to take what? First, cube material. Cube three dot material. Right. So basically what we have to do is we are going to create a basic material where we are going to set its color to be red. So we can see it easily on our plane. Now we need to merge this material and geometry together. For that, we need to write another variable or declare another variable so that we can merge these two things, which is cube. Mesh, where we are going to assign these things, three dot mesh, where we need to merge these two things. Cube geometry and then cube material. And last, what we need to do is we need to add this cube mesh to our scene. For that, we need to write scene dot add cube mesh or cube, right? Let me see. It is okay. So right now you can see our cube is here. Right? So this is how what we can do is we can put a cube here. So suppose you just have to imagine that it's our plane, it's our crown and it's our house, right? So in upcoming lectures, when we are going to learn many more things, when the concept and the things of metaverse or the example of the metaverse, when we are going to create using our 3 js things, at that time, this concepts of plane and how we can put the things on the plane, it's going to work, right? So that's all for the today's or this lecture. In upcoming lecture, we are going to learn more about the materials which we are going to use in our projects and uh, which 3 just provide to us. So thank you and have a nice day. So hello everyone. So in this lecture, you just need to do what? You have a task, right? I am giving you a task that you have to put four boxes or other geometrical figures on the side of each of this plane, right? As I have done here, that I have placed a cube in the center and a cube on the right hand side, right here. Now, your task is to make things more better. Or just say your task is to put four cubes, or you can say a different geometry figure, which any geometry figure which you want that you need to put here, here, and here, right? So this is how what we can have, what happened is that you will understand that how to work together with the different, different materials, right? And after you put this thing, all these things, 
we will learn that how to group items or how to group different different meshes with each other right so this is your task do it by yourself and best of luck so hello everyone in this lecture we are going to discuss about grouping so how we can group the different different materials or different different meshes with each other right so in last lecture we have seen that if i want to rotate this whole plane and the cubes with together i'm unable to do that right let me show you again let's suppose if i just started doing this thing if i start rotating this things what is going to be happen right that we have seen that plane is rotating on its own axis and that blue box is rotating on its own axis right now what we have to do is we have to rotate these cubes and plane together so how would be to, it will be possible so for that there is a concept of making groups sometimes what we need to do is uh, we need uh, we have some different different materials or mesh are and uh, we have to mix or we have to group them to create one uh, one we can say a one entity suppose if you have to create a house how would you go how would you going to create that house so it's the easiest way is just you create a floor and then you will create four walls and after that you create that roof right when you create the, the all these things the next step is that what you have to make it make those walls floors and the top roof as a part of one right you have to bind them together so how would you how would uh, how would you are going to do that right so it's for that we have group concept in 3js so here what we have to do is we just need to do this line of codes right what are this let me show you uh, first let me uncomment all those things and then i will discuss so right now what we have to do is i have just commented out all the meshes what we have created right which we have added to our scene that's why we are unable to see those things now what we have to do is 3js provide us a class which is a three dot group okay so this group class is used to create group so for that what you have to do is you have to write you have to create a variable in which you have to create an object using new keyword and here new keyword and you have to use group class which is available in our 3js module right and then what you have to do is you have to add all your meshes to this group so when you add this group meshes all your meshes which is plain cube red cube and then that blue group or blue cube right so once you group them all then what is going to be happen you have to group them all and then after that you have to put this group into your scene and how we are going to do that with writing scene dot add right so after that what is going to be happen you can see here that uh right now all the elements all the, all the meshes are in the scene right but how you are going to rotate this thing so just suppose if i have to rotate this thing if i write g1 dot rotation dot x right and its value is like this 0.01 now you can see this whole figures like our all the meshes are combined together and they were rotating right and for this particular thing the axis for this cube is also becomes this origin so it's become an whole entity right so in next lecture we are going to learn how we can create a house okay and then after that we are going to learn about different different materials which are present in 3js so till then take care and have a nice day So hello everyone.
In this lecture, we are going to learn that how we can use 3JS basic things to create a house. And then after that, we are going to rotate that house, okay? So in house, what we have to do is, we have a floor, we have four walls, we have a gate, we have a window, and we have a roof, right? So let's make all those things together. So let me show you the screen. What we have seen here, we have a plane which is rotating with two cubes, red cubes and blue cubes. So what we are going to do is, we are going to use these cubes to make the wall as well as we are going to stop rotating that floor or plane, right? So how we can do that? Simply first we need to, as you know, in last lecture, what we have done is we have created a group and we, after creating that group, we are rotating that particular group. So that's why all those things are rotating here, right? Now what we have to do here is, we have to stop this rotation. So I'm going to cut this all things and our rotation is a stop, right? So suppose this is our what? This is our plane. So let's assume that this is our floor, okay? Now this is all our cube. So I'm going to use this cube and we are going to use this cube as a wall. So how we can do that? So let's go here and find out which is our blue cube, right? So this is our blue cube. If I increase its height. You can see we have increased it width, sorry, right. Suppose if I have to increase this thing also, what is going to happen? Wait. So just I need to make it five. Okay. Now I need to set its position. So I need to set this position here about minus two. So in minus two, we have done in uh, y axis. So it goes down. So if I have to put it up, I have to make it two. Again, 2.4. So it is here about something like this. Now what I have to do is it's on four, right? So the cube position on the x axis is on four. So I have to shift this wall here. So how would I can do that? I have to decrease this. Let me try two. Then what we are going to see here is something like this. So let me write one. We are going to see is this. Let it write V0. Okay. Now let me rotate this so we can understand it better way. So generally what we have done at the time when we have created the last lecture or we have when we are in last lecture, we have created a group and rotating that group on the x-axis. So on the x-axis, what will happening is it is rotating in that way. Let me show you. It is rotating like this, right? You can see this. But I don't want to rotate like this. I want to rotate from like this in a anti-clockwise direction. Right now, it's rotating from the upwards towards downward, right? But what we need is we need to rotate this part as a anti-clockwise. How we can do that? So for that, we need to change its axis, rotation axis, to make it Y. So when you make it rotation Y, this will rotate like this. Okay. So as you can see, it is rotating in such a way. So generally, we have created a wall just when wall is completed, we make sure that we need to make or fold walls, right? So how would we are going to do that? So we are going to do that with using this thing. So generally I have created uh, the blue wall is ready. So I'm just fixing some stuff here. So as you can see, it's just become slim, right? If I give the third argument as 0 0.2 in the box geometry for the cube two, which is our blue cube. So you can see using this cube, we have, we have created a wall, which is slimmer, right? And then let me add this, all these things to the red cube. Now, the, oh, sorry. 
Now what happened is our another ball is ready, but its position is not at the at uh, the its position is at the origin, right? We have to shift that. So how to shift that? Just let me write it here. Okay, zero. Let's check. It's a rotation basically. So we need to shift or we need to check. Oh, sorry for that. I have changed the plane rotation. Now what I have to do is I have to set cube mesh position. Cube mesh position. To set that position, we have to write dot set, right? And here, what I have to do is, I have to set this at this particular zero. Let me write it. What we are going to see, we will exist according to that. So, zero, 2.4, and minus four. So, as you can see here, we have generally, we have created this wall at its position. Slightly I have to increase the height or I have to put the wall on the top. So here a wall is ready. Now I have to add another wall or let's say I have to add a roof. So for that roof I am again going to create a box geometry which is our cube and using that cube we are going to use that cube as a roof. Now we get an error because we can't create uh, two variables with same name, right? So for that, what we have done here is we are just going to change the name. So we will get this thing. And this cube color is going to be yellow. Okay. Right now, we are unable to see that cube. Reason? The reason is that because we doesn't have added this thing to our scene. And how we can add this? Either we can create, we can write this kind of thing that scene.add and cube mesh 3. Let me write this. And you will see that thing. Now, here is our cube, which is not rotating because we are just rotating that, that which part? We are just rotating the group part. And this yellow cube, or let me just show you for, if you are unable to see this, let me make it green. So as you can see, this green cube is not rotating. Reason? Because we are just rotating which plane or which part? We are just rotating the group one, right? So which we have created, this group is just rotating. And we are not rotating. We are not rotating the green cube. Okay. So for rotating this group or this green cube, we have to add this in the group. So let me write it here. You mesh. You mesh three. So once I write you mesh three, what is going to be happened? This all things are rotating, right? Now, what we have to do is, I have to rotate this cube at its position, right? Right now, what is happening is, it is rotating and it is horizontally, right? I have to make it vertical. So, how I am going to rotate this thing is, I am going to use plane dot rotation, which we have used to rotate our plane. The same thing is going to be happened with this cube three which is our cube mesh three, right? So before adding this part, I have to do this thing. Cube, mesh three. Now what you can see here, our cube is rotated, right? And it's become a plane, but we need it on the top. So for that, we need to change its position. So for position, we use we have to set changes at y-axis, right? So as we know that, that position dot set takes three arguments generally, which are what? Which are like this. If 
for x, y, and z. So in if I make change in y-axis, we are going to shift that cube at the top of the flow. The next lecture, we are going to do that. Thank you and have a nice day. In last lecture, we have discussed that how we have to create our house, right? So now I have, what I task have, what task I have is, I have to shift this green floor or green, green cube at the top of the house. Then how would I am going to do that? Is like, uh, just add here, I have just given the position of this thing. And we are discussing that if I increase the, uh, increase the what? The value of Y, you're going to be, it will be positive, right? Now what happened is, our wall, our red wall is on the top. Right, it changed the position. Reason, the reason is that we have changed here in the cube mesh, and we have to make change in cube mesh three. Now you can see that cube mesh three is on top, and we have to set its position again. So for that, let me write it here zero. Now. We can see our house is red, a little bit ready. Now I just need to increase the position here for the volume or the width of that part of that cube, which is seven. And our house is a little bit ready. Let me write it eight. So finally, we have created the whole structure, not just whole structure. But we have created a floor, two walls, and a roof. Right. It's look like something, some container, or we, we can say, right? So now we have to create these two walls, which are not here. For that part again, what we have to do is we have to create a mesh. So let's again try to make a mesh which is Q. Okay. Same things which we have to do is we have to change the names here. So we are going to change the name here. Let me write it four. Once you have written this, then what we have to do, we are what you are going to check see or here is let me show you. The, You material four mesh four right so that is the part which is our mesh and we have to set it where to this position to this wall how we are going to do that so again we just need to change the position here if we change the position what we have seen let me stop rotating this part and let's understand what changes we need to make here. I think that wall is just a parallel to this wall. So we need to rotate that wall, right? We need to rotate that wall is like this. Okay. So how we are going to do that? For that, we need to rotate that wall on or set the position on the Y axis. We need to rotate that wall. And how we are going to rotate this? Like this. So, for that particular thing, we have to do is <clears throat> uh, I have to set this as 4. And instead of doing this thing on x axis, I have to rotate that wall on the y axis. Now you can see this wall is here, right? If I rotate this whole group, we are going to see the result. Now, 
so we have created that wall again those but the what task we have to do is we have to create a uh, we have to set its position so that we can get it at wall on this side for that what we have to do is for that we have to again go here and set its position so what kind of position we have to give here is like three uh, minus three i think so on the x-axis what is going to be helpful we have to shift this time this wall here okay again we have to change this position which is minus four and i think we are really close to it so if i write minus five okay so we are closed and we have to just shift this position to more towards the origin of the z axis which is let me write two or one okay so we are just completely here we have created this wall and it's little bit big so we need to reduce the size of it so for that i just need to write here like okay if i reduce this size then i have to change the origin and this position basically so now our wall is ready so completely what happened is our house is ready where the two walls have blue color floor has a yellow color our rooftop has green color and another wall has red color, right? So this is how we can create our house. If you want to put the put window, you can put it here, right? So this is just uh, understanding things. This is uh, this exercise is for just you explain how you can play with the meshes and its position and its rotation, right? So these are some basic tips or basic things which you can use to create your own structures using different different materials and different different meshes right hello everyone so in this lecture we are going to learn about materials which are present in three years right so what are materials basically so to understand this thing let's understand our code which we have written over the last couples of times when we are doing other, other different different things and we are learning different different things right like creating cube and cone and our sphere right so we have created different type of geometry using 3js in our last and previous lectures now if i talk about that what is our material right so as we know that uh, to create what uh, to create any material, uh, sorry, a uh, mesh, okay, to create any mesh or geometrical figure on the canvas or on the, you can say on the web browser, we need what? We need two things which are geometry and material and the combination of these two things become a mesh, okay? So as you can see here, we have uh, a plane, right, which is a colored yellow plane and uh, to create this plane, what we have done here is first we create a plane geometry, right? Using a plane geometry method of 3JS. And then we use a mesh basic material. So what is uh, this basic material is, right? So this is used, these are some, these have some its own property, right? There are different kind of materials available, which we are going to discuss in this lecture. So right now we have maze basic material which we used here and we have given some argument right here as a uh, as we can say as a in a key value pairs right so which is in a json format right so in this uh, what we can say in this argument we have given them given color which is yellow and we have given a side which is double sided so what is this double sided and what is color and what is basic material we are going to discuss lots of things in details right now so before we move further let's understand let's create some basic uh, cubes to understand more about some materials right first of all i would like to 
add some things. So I have written some code here and I'm just going to add these things. So we are here ready. Now, so this is some code, okay? I will give you this code. You will review it easily and understand it easily because we have done these things in last lectures. So I don't think that we need to explain. I need to explain all those things that how to create these cubes, how which line is going to create this cube, okay? So I have just created this basic, uh, basic uh, project or basic code. I've created this basic code. So here now we are going, we are going to focus on materials. Okay. Okay. So let's understand what is material. So let me write. Okay. So when you search materials in 3JS, you are going to get this documentation. This documentation is very useful. So if you want to know what is material, you can say that material describes the appearance of an object. They are identified by a mostly renderer independent way. So you don't have to rewrite the material if you decided to use different renderer. Basically thing is that it, it, it helps you to define or describe the appearance of the appearance of the material of the meshes, right? As we have created two boxes here, right? Which is also known as cube. Now, using those material, we are defining how it's appear, right? As you can see here, I have written mesh basic material and I have given an argument, right? As an object, which is color colon blue. So as we have defined that this material must be a blue of color, right? So its color is going to be defined as the blue. Similarly, to create this mesh, I have written, a, another, I have used a material in which I have given a color property as red. So what are the material is basically to define or to define or describe the appearance of any, of any meshes, right? We use a thing called what material? And these all are the classes which is defined here. Now let's let me show you some examples or how different kind of materials are available here. So instead of writing here, let me write it here material. Now you can see there are different kind of material. This is the mesh basic material which we are right now using, right? And mostly we use standard material. There are different kind of materials available, but mostly we use two time kind of materials, which are basic material and the second one is standard material. Sometimes we use form material also, but it's depend upon the requirement of the projects or the things, right? We also have a shader material, shadow material. So we are going to learn so many things in upcoming lectures related to material, what kind of materials available. And my task is to give you some introductory part and explain you some concepts of the material. And your task is to go through the documentation, which I have given the link, right? Just go there, try to read it, understand it and apply it in your code, okay? So now let's discuss about basic material, okay? So basic material is just uh, like for a material for drawing geometry in a simple shade. Right. Just suppose if I use standard material instead of basic material, what kind of change we are going to see? Right. So just let me write here. Just let me copy this thing. Mesh standard material. And what going to be effect here if I just change this thing? Let me save this and let's uh, let's look how it's going to be cheap. Now see what is going to be happened here, right? That we have given what we have uh, used mesh standard material and we have given a color blue to which geometrical box, which is a cube two, right? So when we created this cube mesh two, right? We have given this data, but we are seeing a black box here. Do you know the reason? So the basic reason is that 
when we use standard material that standard material only shows or reflect the color when a light present in the scene right in our scene right now we don't have any light present okay because in the world of 3d right inside our web page there is a no light source there are only some materials and the meshes are in front of us so we have to learn that how to add light in the scene or in our web page in according to me the what was i would like to refer light not the light which we are in the room right okay the light i was not talking about the sunlight i was talking about the light which we are going to use in our web page or our canvas or our scene okay which were in the environment of this thing right so in 3js there are so many lights also given right as a material which we have similar way we have different different lights right now let me show you some example so you can understand it better i hope there was an example on this deck documentation so let me just search it so here i have some examples or let's just say click on the example and let me write it here so it will take some time because there are multiple resources they need resources multiple resources regarding to load those things right so if i write standard material now you can see this is an example of an standard material what kind of standard material is let it will load right you can see using 3js we can define anything like this and this is an example of the standard material these are another example of the standard material set so we are just right now what we have used is you can see this is our light source have you seen this point this is all this is a light source and when this light source is moving the whole constant whole balls every balls have different shades of the lights when it's it's crossing from there to here or here to there right so you can see this is called what this is the concept that when you have to show your user this kind of things then at that time the basic material is not going to help you so for that we use standard material standard material gives you some extra ordinary effects that you can use and you can see here as a example right you can see that all the surface has different different things right and different effects so this is used this is created using our standard material so here the material has in playing an important role to define or to define or describe the appearance of different different material of message right so we will learn that how we can use different materials and if and light source to create or we can say how we can use light source and materials different different materials to create such kind of visualization right i hope you understood so in next lecture we are going to learn first how to add light in our scene and then we will understand how we can create different kind of textures and different kind of materials and shininess everything okay so till then take care and have a nice day hello everyone so this lecture what we are going to learn is that how to add light and what is a role of light in our scene right as you can see here there is a model which is loaded and we will learn that how to load a model in upcoming lectures right
Now, right now, I'm just telling you, I'm showing you this thing because I want to tell you the concept of light. As we have seen in our last lecture that we have created a cube or a box of a color blue, right? But when we add here, we have seen black uh, box, right? The reason is that because in our code, we have done what? We have created this blue box using mesh standard material, right? And this mesh, to see this uh, mesh standard material, we need a light, right? Uh, so we have to understand, we have to understand this comparison that basic material is happen when we use, when you use basic material, you don't need a light source or light in your scene. But when you use different uh, materials, is, uh, like except uh, basic material, right? So except basic material, for all the different materials, you need a light source to see those things, right? So we are using a uh, standard material and this standard material needs a light source to reflect the color, what we have used as a material, standard material, right? On this cube to mesh, which is here. The same example we have seen here in the, in the what we can say, in the documentation examples, here it is a bird which is flying, right? But there's no color. It's also look like black. But when I click on toggle hemisphere light, you can see these colors appear, right? The basic fundamental is that uh, when I click this light, uh, this button, there was a light or the code runs and a light added to the scene, okay? So you have to understand that this is the concept to defer, to display or to see different materials, except basic material. Basic material has or doesn't require any light source, but different materials like uh, we can say standard material or the form material, they need a light source. Okay, so you have to learn or you have to understand that whenever you are using different materials, except from the basic material, you have to use a light source as we have seen here, right? There are different kinds of light source available. Like you can say, this is a directional directional light. Okay, so when what is directional light basically? A light source which comes from one direction. And what is hemisphere light? Hemisphere light it has equal value to everywhere, every surrounding of the sea, right? So you don't have to understand, uh, you have to confuse that. What is hemisphere light? Hemisphere light is all, uh, uh, available everywhere with the same density, right? But the directional light is what? Directional light comes from a particular direction and it's only available to some of the part of the scene, right? For example, you can see, uh, we can take an example of sunlight, right? Sunlight is, if you see a ground plane or a mountain or a forest, that uh, sunlight is uh, available everywhere with the same density, right? But if you see a bulb or a spotlight in a theater or in a, you can say in your house or in a room, you can find that that bulb or that electric uh, that spotlight has only uh, have lights on uh, its path, right? So there are multiple different lights also available here. But right now we are going to understand these two things, which is hemisphere light and then directional light, right? So let me understand or let me explain you that how you can add hemisphere light in the in your scene, right? Okay. So let me close this window and okay. So what is hemisphere light basically? Uh, if you see the uh, what you can say documentation and you will find the definition here that a light source positioned directly above the sea and with the color fading from the sky to the ground plane. Now, this light cannot use to cast the shadow, right? As you can see in the example, that whenever you need to cast a shadow, you we have to use what? We have to use hemis uh, directional light, right? If I close this hemisphere light, you can see we are casting a shadow here on the ground, but and how it is really how it is happening because we are using directional light. If I close the directional light, we are not going to get shadow. Same example is that if I do what? If I add hemisphere light, we are still not going to get 
this uh, what we can say shadow so this is just an example or this is a basic understanding for these lights in next lecture we are going to learn that how to add light in our in our c or in our web page thank you and have a nice day Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about how we can add light into our C. So till now, we have understood that to see some different kind of materials in world or in our C, we require light. Here, red color is used, created using basic material. And here, this black box, which is originally a color of, we can say blue color, it is used by creating standard base, standard material, right? Now, we are going to learn that how we can add light to our C. So before understanding this, what is light? So uh, when we use light in our C, the different materials, the object or the meshes created using different material will show their properties or characteristics. Simple as that. Similarly, if you have a light in your room, you can see everything in a good way, right? But there is no light, you will find hard and difficulties to see things. So similarly, in similar way, we use light to uh, see the objects or the measures in our world, in our 3Js world, right? Okay, so there are different kinds of lights available in 3Js. Mostly we use hemisphere light and directional light. So let's understand what is these things. So hemisphere light source position directly above the sea, right? And with the color fading from the sky color to the ground color. Generally, what is hemisphere light is? Uh, whenever you add hemisphere light, its position, it is automatically get the position at the top or at the above of the sea, right? So that the, what you can say, the light density uh, of that light, that hemisphere light is at everywhere same, right? So what we can say that whenever you are using hemisphere light, it will uh, directly positioned above the C and the, and the density of that light uh, in the C is equal at everywhere, okay? Now, what we are going to do, let me show you some example, as we have already seen, right? That uh, when I, you can see, this is an example of the hemisphere light. You can see this diamond shape. Okay, so this diamond shape is representing what is hemisphere light, which is, which is coming from this direction. And you can see the density of that light is equal to every place. In similar way, how you can add this light in your code, just like this. So you have to create a, a variable, right? And with any name, then you have to use this method, hemisphere light method, where you have to pass three arguments. First one is basically sky color. What kind of color you want in your sky? Then second one is ground color. What kind of color you want at your ground and the intensity of that light, of that particular light. So let me add this and you will see the difference here. So this is our right now uh, C, which we have created using a plane and two box meshes, right? And this meshes has different, different material. So this red material, red box has basic material and this black box has standard material of blue color. Now I'm going to add the light here and you are going to see something happening. So just let me add light here. Adjust according to our indentation and let's see. Now you can see that our this box is look like blue. If I remove that line again, and you will see the result, 
right? It's become black. The reason is that when you add C, or oh, sorry, when you add light in your C, this material start catching that light and that light when reflected to that material, it will you will see the original color of that material and which is blue, right? So you have to understand that basic material doesn't have any effect of light, but standard material have effect of light. So if the light is present in that particular scene, then only you can see the true color of that basic material. Oh, sorry, of that standard material, right? And to add that light, how you can do this? You just need to use hemisphere light method of three. And you have to pass three arguments. First one is the color of the sky. Second one is the color of the ground. And the last one is the intensity. If I, if I reduce this, the intensity, you can see, you can see light bluish color. Right? This is a very dark. It's a combination of black and blue. Because the intensity is a little bit low. If we increase the intensity, you can see the output. Now you can see a little bit bluish. And if you give the intensity of full, of which is one, you can see the perfect blue color. Right? So this is how we can add and adjust the light density and according to our needs. I hope this concept helped you to learn that how you can add light in your scene. In upcoming lectures, we are going to discuss more about these things. When we do projects, uh, we need uh, this kind of things in our projects. So I hope you understood the concept of light. Till then, take care and have a nice day.